Incredible scenes, and in fact, we've just heard that Chancellor Helmut Kohl has in fact interrupted his visit to Poland to return home for an emergency cabinet session on the East German crisis. Mr. Kohl will return to uh, Poland late on Saturday to resume a six-day visit, which of course has been totally overshadowed by what's been going on in East Berlin. Well, this morning, East Germans have been going back through the Berlin Wall. When one man was asked why, he said, I'm going to work. What else should I be doing at this time? Last night, many East Berliners simply didn't believe that the borders were opening. As soon as they heard the news, thousands began to make their way to the crossing points. Our reporter, Ron McCullough, was with them. It began with confusion. Most could not believe it. So they came to see for themselves. I want to pass and I want to travel through the world. It's all. <laughs> <laughs> the gates didn't all open together. Friedrichstrasse in central Berlin was one of the first. Many got through at the first attempt, but many more were disappointed. Open up, they chanted, open up, at the doors of the East Berlin official tourist office, and the doors opened. This the final hurdle. The impatient queuing, the bewildered officials, and at last, the stamped ID card. By now, they knew they were free to go west. Along the wall that divided the city, it was celebration. East Berlin erupted, and the crowds came to see what many still could not believe. The Iron Curtain opened in East Berlin tonight. Thousands of East Germans have flocked to checkpoints all along the wall. A few minutes ago, we met a young East German girl who was just about to cross. She became the very first East German citizen to cross at Checkpoint Charlie under these new regulations. A most remarkable night. You're happy? Yes. I am happy. Do you think you'll get through tonight? Yes, I think so. So close, but Checkpoint Charlie is not yet reached. And then, after nearly 30 years, Checkpoint Charlie is open to all. The confusion inside the border post. And then, at last, for this woman and the thousands that followed her, the wall had tumbled down. Into the British sector of West Germany they came. And the British Army was there to meet them. To be here, standing as we are, watching this, it's quite something, quite something. All those I spoke to, crossing east to west, said it was only a visit. But something changed here last night, and Germany, East and West, will never be the same again. In the West German Parliament, deputies applauded when they heard the East German border had been opened. But the influx of thousands of people from the GDR will create serious problems for West Berlin. The West German Parliament broke into a spontaneous rendition of the national anthem. Former Chancellor Willy Brandt, who was West Berlin's mayor when the wall was built, was clearly overcome. I think it was an hour of unity, unity in the evaluation of this event, which means the end of the wall, the de facto end of the wall, 28 years after its establishment. In the streets of West Berlin, some couldn't believe the news. You've got to be kidding. <laughs> but come on, it's not true. Well, I haven't heard it anyhow. I don't believe it. Present Chancellor Helmut Kohl, out of the country on a long-awaited official visit to Poland, said he might be returning home early because of the dramatic events, and called for face-to-face -face talks with his counterpart in the East, Egon Krentz. But concerns in West Berlin are also building about the expected influx from the East over the next few days. The city's mayor has appealed for East Germans who intend to visit the West temporarily not to do so yet, because West Berlin won't be able to cope. Many have already crossed the wall permanently into short-term accommodation. Those who follow are likely to make West Berlin's already serious housing shortage rapidly worse. 
The breach in the Berlin Wall is the most palpable sign yet of change in the political landscape of Eastern Europe. In Moscow, the government spokesman, Gennady Gerasimov, said the East German people were moving towards perestroika on their own terms. A little earlier, I spoke to our Moscow correspondent, Martin Sixsmith. It seems almost that uh, uh, the media here has been uh, taken by surprise uh, by the speed of the events uh, in East Berlin. Uh, uh, yesterday, the government spokesman, as you pointed out, uh, was talking of the two Germanys having drifted apart, and he was rejecting uh, any talk of moves towards reunification. So he gave no indication that Moscow was expecting uh, anything like what we saw last night. But I would be very surprised if the Kremlin hadn't been informed of Mr. Krentz's intentions. He was here last week, and he's clearly kept in touch with Mr. Gorbachev ever since then. Do you think that uh, they may well be viewing events with some alarm in Moscow because there are 380,000 Soviet troops in East Germany? It's the linchpin, isn't it, of, of the Warsaw Pact? I think Moscow's bottom line seems to be that uh, the East Germans can and should uh, move towards democratization, uh, towards free elections even, uh, as long as it remains part of the Warsaw Pact. Uh, the uh, spokesmen here are fond of giving the example of Poland, saying that Poland has moved towards democracy, but it's remained a faithful member of the pact. And I think as long as uh, the military interests of the Soviet Union, uh, the GDR is after all the East Bloc's uh, front line with the West, as long as those are safeguarded, uh, then Moscow is happy to see uh, the East Germans moving towards what they call uh, perestroika on East German terms. In Washington, President Bush has welcomed the news that East Germany had opened its borders, but he said East Germans should stay in their country and help in the process of political reform. This report from our foreign affairs correspondent, Jeremy Bowen, in Washington. In the Oval Office, George Bush, flanked by his Secretary of State, said the Berlin Wall had become a virtual irrelevance. But this is a cautious president who wants stable political change in East Germany. These are Germans. And Germans love their country. And at some point, uh, I think a lot of Germans who had felt pent in and, 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 and unable to move are going to say, look, we can move, but wouldn't it be better to participate in the reforms that are taking place in, my, in our own country? Last May, in West Germany, visiting Chancellor Kohl, President Bush called for the demolition of the wall. Then it was little more than rhetoric. Now his administration can see Europe's divisions crumbling. I don't know if the term Iron Curtain uh, is dead, but it certainly appears to be coming down. The administration, though, does not want to disrupt the process of change, and if it needs them, they've been reminded...